Time for the February Debt Snowball Update. Hi guys, Ashley from Ash Cash Budget here. If you are new to this channel, I'm currently following the Dave Ramsey baby steps. I am on baby step number two, paying off about $42,000 in debt. If you'd like to continue to follow me on my journey, click the little red subscribe button down below. Like I said, we're doing the February debt snowball update. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm still late, but I'm trying to still catch up and get motivated to make videos. Thank you guys for being patient with me as I kind of get back into things. I need to get a little bit of motivation going to kind of get things rolling again. I just have not been very creative and that includes YouTube. I'm wondering if you all would still like to see a January budget update. I haven't done them in forever and it's already mid-February but I thought I would ask you guys would you still like to see that even if it's in, near the end of February. I th think January is a good place to start with budget updates again so just let me know what you think down below. My chair just broke. This is my debt snowball update layout. Down here we have the debt graveyards which is all of the six consumer debts that I had before I got down to my number seven debt which was my student loans. This is all paid off and now I'm down to number seven my student loans which I then broke up into the seven individual loans and worked it as its own little debt snowball. I have gotten all the way through to the last student loan. I am on my last loan and it has been very surreal. I can't believe I'm at this point. The dates over here just correspond to when I originally took out each loan. That way I could tell them apart and the S's and U's are subsidized and unsubsidized for people that are into knowing about that. This is in the minimum payment column. Each loan did have its own minimum payments and I just made one lump minimum payment each month which then automatically got separated into each loan. I do round up so for this last loan it's $28.49 is the minimum payment but I round up to the nearest five so I actually pay $30 as the minimum payment for the last student loan. And then in the snowball category that is anything extra that I have put towards the debt this month. For nerds who like to know extra numbers like myself, I actually have a couple other columns here. It shows the difference from last month and the difference since I started my debt-free journey in March of 2017. So I have total actual paid, what it actually went down by, the actual number it went down, and then lost to interest. Now I had a really tough decision to make in January regarding my debt snowball and the goals that I am trying to reach. Since I started in March of 2017, my three year anniversary will be this next debt snowball update. Not the one that we are doing today, but next month's where I pull the numbers on the 1st of March, that will be my three year debt anniversary. So there are some goals I would like to reach by that point. And in January, I had to make a decision so I could keep this goal going towards that three year anniversary as much as possible. January is notoriously one of the slowest months of the year in my business. And I even have a sinking fund called the January fund. It's for any month that I make less at my regular job. So it doesn't have to just be January, but because it's a variable income, I wanted to make sure my bills would be covered. Over the past couple years, I have been able to scrape by with that and side hustles. So I've been able to cover my bills, but I have that fund just in case. Now I still have that fund. It has about $1,400 in there. But what I'm getting at is January is the slowest month. So I was not able to come up with a whole lot of money for my debt snowball. With just my regular job and my side hustles, I did cover all my bills but I was only going to be able to put $696.90 towards my debt snowball. About $290 was from my side hustles, Instacart, Postmates, and DoorDash, so I did make almost $300 from that. So I did make enough from my regular job for my bills and then some towards the debt snowball. When I pulled my numbers last month, that last loan was at $4,739.99. 
And in order for me to try to continue towards this goal of getting this debt paid off by my three year anniversary, that's the goal. I had to get more like $2,000, $2,700 paid towards that student loan in January. What I decided to do, and it was a tough decision, I had a moving sinking fund. And I know I've talked about it at one point or another, but I had a moving sinking fund and I saved up $2,000. And over the year, year and a half, I don't remember when exactly I started it. I think it was like a year and a half ago. It's with interest, it was at $2,029. And 61 cents. I specifically made this account because I was unsure about my living situation and I was making sure I had money in case I needed to get up and move somewhere else. I would have the first month's rent and the security deposit and some moving expenses covered within this $2,000. I ended up getting to stay in the place that I am at under my own circumstances and I don't have to worry about having to just suddenly move, which was a reality for a little while there. That's sort of a tough subject to talk about, without going into too much detail at all. I think it was a good move to protect myself in case I needed to suddenly move. And I think it was smart to save up money. And if you're in that situation, you should consider your alternatives and make sure you can take care of what you need to do. Now that I am in a much better position, I have signed a new lease. It was a six month lease, so it will be up in April. And then I will go month to month after that. So I actually don't immediately have to move if I don't want to, because I can go month to month for a little while again and figure out what I need to do. And if the goal is to be debt free very, very soon, if I decide I want to move, I can come up with the money rather easily because I won't be putting any money towards debt. I will be working on my emergency fund, but I can come up with money if I have to move at any point in the future after I'm debt free. So my decision was to take that $2,029.61 out of my moving fund since I am now in a safe position for myself and put it towards my debt in January. I was a little scared too, but I really am in a much better position now and I don't have to worry about leaving. And I really, really want to reach this three year anniversary mark. So I thought the best idea would be to take that money, it's money I saved up anyways, to go ahead and take it out. Feels a little bit like cheating, but I also think it's not. And combine it with that almost $700 that I had from my regular budget. That means I was able to put 2000 $726.51 towards the snowball this month. That means that last loan is now at $1,997.94. So I'll just pop that down into the total amount since that is now the only thing that I have to add up from my debt. I'm almost done, I'm less than $2,000 now. So it was a really tough decision to take that moving money and put it towards that, but wow, I'm under $2,000. That is what I'm gonna have to do in February in order to be debt free by my three year anniversary, about $2,000. So we'll see. I did tell you I still have that January sinking fund and I'm playing with the idea of anything that I can't cover in February if I take it from that. I don't know, you guys can give me your opinions down below. Uh, I am out of the sort of really slow season and I know that I have a lot of work coming up. So I will be in a safe place. Plus, if I'm debt free, that's less that I have to worry about. Now, for the total actual paid, it would be that minimum of $30 plus the debt snowball amount that I paid. So my total actual paid for the month was $2,756.51. 
Meaning over my whole debt journey, I have paid out $45,466.92. Almost three years, it's a lot of money. My total down since last month is $2,742.05, which means I lost $14.46 to interest this month. My total down since I started my debt-free journey is $40,290.35. And over my whole debt-free journey, I have lost $5,176.57 to interest. And that is it. If you ever find yourself to be in a position that you don't feel completely safe in and you can do anything to help yourself out, and just in case I... I'm glad I didn't have to use that moving money before, but I am very glad that I was looking out for myself over anything else and making sure I was covered if I needed to be. So I would recommend you do the same. Make sure to take care of yourself. I will of course put the links up above to subscribe and another video that YouTube will suggest for you guys. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.